the real Jesus, my friend. We are growing. I hope today we are going to graduate. And I hope you have begun to move mountains with what? With your faith. Because faith is a power. No, no, no. Faith is a power. The faith that God has given us, the faith that never fails us, that's the faith we are going to live by because the righteous live by faith. Now, don't go anywhere. You know I'll be right back after the introduction. My friend, do you know the real Jesus who laid down his life for you, loves no matter your race, gender, or past sin? Do you know the Father who protects, the shepherd who guides, Jesus who carries you through trials, catches your tears, cries with you, and laughs with you? Welcome to Encounter the Real Jesus. You will never be the same. It's good to be with you again. It's good when I receive your phone calls and I receive your letters. Even there are people who are moving by faith right now. And they are saying, you know what? Encounter the real Jesus we are in. Not only are we going to pray for you, but we are going to start giving automatically because we forget to give. Can you believe it that sometimes there is so much snow, we can't make it to church, and because we did not make it to church, we put the offering money in our pocket. No, things should not be that way. We are men and women of faith, and as such, we are generous. Do you know that God tells how great your faith by looking at your giving? You say, well, Pastor, I don't know how is my faith. Well, go look at your checkbook. Where have you been giving? You know, the Lord spoke to me. I was going shopping. And he began to show me how we human we can be selfish. You go to the furniture store, oh, my kids need a new couch. But the couch and the church has holes. The, 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 the couch, the furniture in the pastor's office, they are falling apart. No. We must be generous. It's a part of having that great faith. In fact, before you get great faith, God will test you in the area of giving. You know he did that with Abraham. Give me your only son, the one that you love, the best you got on the earth. Just think about a minute. Think what is best you have. If it's something where to hit in your area and you have to rush to get out of the house. Why would you pick? Why would you take that is so dear to you? That's why you need to give God. James, the book of James, it's a good one to grow your faith. So maybe you need to read this book every single day. When I read this book of James, I find out that God tests your faith. James, uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 2 and 4. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. You have been going through various trials. It's not just one. They take a different form and they take a different shape. But those trials are not there to destroy us, but to make us strong. Hallelujah. So when you go through trials, 
When you go through testing, you do not give up. You endure how long, how long. I had this young man coming and saying, this is happening to me. I need money. He's a pastor. He's going through persecution. And each day I can see we are getting closer to a place where he can be safe. But oh boy, I've been sending money and I'm Lord. How long? The Lord says, well, however long it takes, we must save this life. So faith must be tested. And when you're tested, you must endure and you must be faithful and obedient until when? Until death. Hallelujah. And let have endurance, have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. When you go through testing and you endure and you pass the test, your faith will become perfected. Remember Job when you go through your testing. I just thought about what Rwandans are going through because I can see, I can hear what they're going through. Oh my, they're living the book of Revelation and beyond. And when I see that, I see that we are not going through something like that. We must, we must endure, we must endure. Now, faith, hallelujah, faith must have works. Last night we were discussing, we were having our faith grow. And uh, my dear friend, my spiritual son, uh, he began to share with me what God showed him. He said, you know what? Christians should not just be Christians but they should be calm, born again. See, even the devil believes. He knows the word of God is true, but guess what? He cannot practice it. So you need to practice the word of God. When the Bible say to not be angry, we must get rid of anger. Anger is not going in heaven. When the Bible say give, you must give. When the Bible says submit yourself to spiritual authority, that is very important, my friend. We must do it. We must have works. And that what shows our faith is very genuine. In James 2, 14, hallelujah. We will read that and we will continue to discuss about it after the break. It says, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works? Can that faith save him? No. If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself. I don't know about you, but I do not want to have a faith that's dead. Faith that's dead is no faith at all. It must be alive. We must practice the word of God. We must obey it. We must put it in action. There is a plenty need out there. There are many things that we can do to make our faith life. We're going to talk about that. Don't forget to call us. We are waiting to pray for you. 
If you miss the Holy Fire Revival, our ministry has put together a DVD to help you experience the atmosphere of being in the presence of the Lord for four nights, together with like-minded saints, praying and worshiping the King through the night. We received God's grace through anointed messages and through impartation of holy fire, holy dance, and other spiritual gifts, one-on-one deliverance, miracles, signs, and wonders took place in our midst within the atmosphere of God's consuming fire. We have captured some of these precious moments to share with our viewers. For a gift of $25 or more, our ministry will send you the Revival DVD. Those who call to become our monthly partners will receive this gift free of charge. Order your copy today. Receive an impartation of God's holy fire. We are in the age of the Holy Spirit. The power of God is unlimited. The anointing that breaks the yoke rests upon our ministry. People are encountering the real Jesus in our services. Those who are depressed and oppressed are receiving deliverance and healing. Sinners are turning back to God. Together, we are experiencing a great move of God. The Lord spoke to us, my children, take my message out to the people faster than the eagle soars and faster than the gazelle runs. Donate today and be part of the team that gets things done. Together, let's slam the gates of hell. Together, let's bring God's kingdom to every home. Send your gift to Blazing Holy Fire, 10940 South Parker Road, number 785, Parker, Colorado, 80134-7440. Or give online at theblazingholyfire.com forward slash donate. Hallelujah. Welcome back, my friend. We are talking about faith. And this year is the year to have great faith. So nobody should freak out when they encounter a great testing and trials. That means there is a great faith coming. Have we been tested in the USA and all over the world with a coronavirus? Have we been tested with this election? We have a power over uh, everything that has happened to this country and to this world. Very soon, the solution by the world order, people will realize this is not working. They are coming to us. And so the most important thing to own right now is greater faith, the greatest faith that it can be. I know that there are people who have New Year resolution. Maybe number one is for you to work at your relationship with your spouse, your fiance, or your children. Those are great things. But you know number one is to own that great faith. Maybe uh, your New Year resolution is to work hard, make lots of money. Those are great things. But you know, those things are all going to pass away. The resolution that I suggest to our viewer is to become the possessor of the great faith like Abraham, like Jesus. But he tells us in the end of times, Our faith will be greater in John 14, 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And the greater works than it is, he will do because I go to the Father. We need to let this sink within us. We need to meditate upon this and maybe start making the list of those greater things than what Jesus did. 
There is a power within us that is given to us. There is a day when I pray, I say, God, grant me the power. Grant me to walk in a greater faith. There are many things that will grow your faith, as we said, one of them being the word of God. The Bible tells us, to be rich in the word of God. But the other thing that will also help you is to try different methods of getting the word of God in you. Of course, read the Bible. Write down the word. You gain more by writing down the word. And you gain more when you read it out loud. A friend of mine, he said, every time I try to read, I fall asleep. That is the devil. Kick him out. You can try by, before you read, you put on the blood of Jesus. You repent for your sin. And you take power and bind every devil that is in the room, in your house, in your neighborhood. So that when you read, he's not going to bother you. When you bind him, he's going to be bound. Also, uh, visual, visual, that's another way to get the word of God in you. But it's uh, very powerful when you meditate, you read slowly, you let that sink in you and you meditate in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to talk uh, as we close the program today. Your faith with a prayer. The book of Jude tells us another way to grow your faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. If you're watching and you do not have the tongues, you cannot speak in tongues, please give us a call. We are going to help you. In fact, tomorrow, there is a gentleman that I'll be helping to speak in tongues. That is going to take maybe a minute or two. It's easy. You just have to believe right. If you're going to a church where they say the tongues are not for today, you should uh, reject that teaching and you should stop going to that church because they're giving you false teaching. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. James 1, 6, 8. It tells us when you ask what is the attitude, they say that he must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea driven and and tossed by the wind. We must get rid of the doubt, the unbelief. Because there are many out not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his way. Today we're going to kick out the double-mindedness. It hinders the prayer, the doubts, the unbelief. When you pray, you need to become one with your heart. You must believe. And when you speak, do not let your mind wander. So that you say one thing, you say yes, but inside of you, you say no. You need to learn to become one with your heart, with your soul, with your spirit. Because where there is agreement, there is a faith, and there is going to be a miracle. We must pray the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is going to raise the dead back to life. There was a time that the Lord gave me a vision, and when I was praying, the enemy began to, to live, but not run. And then when I began to 
wonder if it really this prayer is working, the enemy start coming back. The devil can hear you when you pray. He can tell you when you have a doubt and unbelief because he's the one who put those doubts in people. No more doubts. No more unbelief. Why would you doubt a father who loves you more than a heavenly father? The reason why people doubt is because they don't know him. It's a time to come to God and to get to know him. It's good to pray out loud. But every day, take an hour and learn to be still with God. Our faith is growing. My friend, we'll be right back. We are going to pray. We are going to command the mountains to move. For God to help you in your faith work with him, and he will. I ask God Almighty to solve all your issues. I see the Lord taking away your burdens, your worry, and your fear. And I see the Lord raising among you great men and women of faith. To you who have listened to this word that I shared this whole month, and you put in a practice, it has been given to you great and great power. Mountains and nature and all God's creation, they have been commanded to listen to you. It's in this way Elijah will command the fire to come and the fire will come. It's in this way he will command the rain and the rain obeys. Why? Because nature and all God's creation have been commanded to listen to a man or a woman who will pray with great faith. Now, we're going to practice. We're going to practice. James 5, 14. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elder of the church. And they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up, 
And if he has committed these sins, they will be forgiven him. If you are struggling with any sickness and disease, please give us a call. As I leave you, the Lord commands me to speak to doubts, a double-mindedness in your life. Leave God's people right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Faith is arising within you. You have been blessed by listening to these words of God. Please pick the phone, call me, and support me. Please pick the phone and sow into our ministry. You will not regret it, and your life will go from glory to glory because we are a very tired soul. Now, until we meet again, we're going to rejoice. We are going to believe and only believe. If you miss the Holy Fire Revival, our ministry has put together a DVD to help you experience the atmosphere of being in the presence of the Lord for four nights, together with like-minded saints, praying and worshiping the King through the night. We received God's grace through anointed messages and through impartation of holy fire, holy dance, and other spiritual gifts, one-on-one -on -one deliverance, miracles, signs and wonders took place in our midst within the atmosphere of God's consuming fire. We have captured some of these precious moments to share with our viewers. For a gift of $25 or more, our ministry will send you the Revival DVD. Those who call to become our monthly partners will receive this gift free of charge. Order your copy today. Receive an impartation of God's holy fire. When Christians learn to pray effectively, the devil will be in trouble all over the world. He will lose in your household. He will lose in your neighborhoods, city, and state. The whole nation will be transformed. For the gift of any size to this ministry, we will send you Praying Deeply, a prayer training manual as taught by the Lord to Pastor Christine through a face-to-face -face encounter. Encounter the Real Jesus is brought to you by Christine Coleman and Blazing Holy Fire Church. For healing, deliverance, and intimacy with God, join our Sunday 7 p.m. revival services, 9250 East Bellevue Avenue, Greenwood Village, Colorado, 80111. For mobile giving, text GIVE to 720-586-4390. Visit theblazingholyfire.com for more options. Till next time, Jesus says, smile and be happy.